found this evidence of me having an affair after I came back from my business trip and then, so my husband, Tony Washington, male 35, and I, female 33, met at a mutual friend's wedding. Well, more like at my cousin's wedding. He was a friend of my cousin's husband. We were sitting at the same table. He was and still is a very handsome, clean, and sophisticated gentleman. I remember on the day we met, I had worn a very long dress, so it somehow tripped me and I almost fell. Imagine falling in front of all the people that were in that hall. It would have been such a bummer and embarrassing. So Tony luckily caught me beforehand since I was trying to stand when I tripped and he was sitting next to me. His touch gave me goosebumps that I didn't even know I had. Not to mention his soft hands. It felt so right when they touched me. Even his gentle gesture was something else. What I felt for Tony was what I can call love at first sight. He didn't try much or said many words, but his gentleness and handsomeness drew me to him. During that day, we were talking and laughing. It was really nice to be with him. He was in good company. He made me forget about anything else. It felt like nothing was existing except for him and I. I even forgot that we were at my cousin's wedding. I had found a friend and also a lover there. I thought I had found the one my soul needed. He was my true answered prayers. I love a man who knows what they want and makes every effort to get it. Mind you, at that time, I had a plan of starting my own internet cafe and coffee shop. And with Tony's knowledge and skills in IT, I knew I had gained resources to help me start a successful internet cafe. It seemed like it was a blessing in disguise, you know. It felt like with Tony by my side, I would have everything figured out and it would be successful with his intelligence on board. Since then we became friends, he taught me a lot about IT that I didn't know. Well, I wanted to start an internet cafe because we didn't have one in Sicily in big cities, which was far from where I was staying. So I wanted to help my community get easy access to the internet without even having to go to the big city for it. I made it specifically for students so that they can have easy access to the internet and be able to find school projects information in it without having to waste more money to get to the big city to get it. Tony helped me start the internet cafe, which was very sweet and generous of him. I was glad for the service that he had delivered. He started being a computer tutor. Each and every minute that I would spend with him was always priceless. I still melted in his touch and his voice. It had that kind of thing that makes you feel like you have been given some voodoo or he uses voodoo to make my heart palpitate. Months later, Tony declared his love for me. Well, I had already felt something for him and I was falling pretty hard for him, but I couldn't tell him. I was protecting my heart from being rejected and my ego and pride. He told me how much he enjoys spending time with me and thanked the opportunity that I had given of trusting him with my community children and students. Well, Tony was not from Sicily. He had first come for the wedding, which was the first day that we had first met. So Tony and I dated for two years. We were still in the phase of knowing each other very well before we tied the knot. Dot it was the best option, and it gave us time to learn more about each other. I was happy with the fact that Tony was not rushing to any marriage. Yes, we were committed to each other. Well, Tony was residing in Agrigento in the southern coast of Sicily while my home was in Piazza Armarina, which was about one hour and some minutes drive apart. So he would go home for like a week, then come to see me whenever he was free, or I would go to his city when I was not busy. Our love was like a flower. It kept blossoming every minute that we would spend with each other or when we were communicating. Months later, well, we had gotten two years of dating, so we got married on the day of our dating anniversary. You know, it's really nice and fulfilling having to spend the rest of your life with your favorite person who is also your partner. We got to share all our flaws, our dreams, our future and plans. After getting married, we moved to Tefalu, where we wanted to start our own family. We were living the dream and I couldn't be much happier. I mean, why wouldn't you be happy when you have been given a chance to spend the rest of your life with someone who you fell in love with on the first day that you saw him? I fell in love with Tony the day we had first met. Deep down, I knew that he was my soulmate and my caregiver. He didn't have to try hard to make me happy and feel complete. He knew how to make me feel better during my dull days. He always knew how to put a smile on my face. But you know when I was to be asked why I cheated or dated a stranger from another country while I had the best thing in my life? I don't know how I would answer that question because I have no response for it. As time passed, cafe restaurants expanded. I ended up opening other restaurants in different cities and two outside the country, with Tony's help, of course. That man helped me a lot to the point that he would go as far as missing his business meetings whenever I was going to buy a certain building for the restaurant. You know, when you have something good going on but never get enough of that thing, so you go outside and seek something much better than what you have or getting. It's called greed. I got greedy and allowed my desires to lead me astray. I ended up making bad decisions. 
So one day, Tony started getting too busy to spend time with me. I know we were both busy, but since I was an entrepreneur, I had so much time to spend by myself. Yes, the intimate moments were still fine, but I needed his attention, and I wanted to spend more time with him. I mean, we had stayed far away from each other for almost two years when we were still dating. Ever since we got married, we had spent a couple of times together. We would go out, eat out, or go to play games. My relationship or my marriage with Tony was somehow great because we would always allow ourselves to be young again. Playing games, going out on ice cream dates, attending exhibitions together, we were stress-free and carefree. It was like we were in our very own dimension, living with our rules. Later that day, he respected my request to be back home before dawn and came back home earlier. During dinner, we ate over light conversation, but one would see that there was a huge change between us. The conversations were no longer flowing. It was like we were forcing it. As one of us didn't know how to carry on with the conversation and my heart was so heavy because of his behavior, so I decided to just tell him about the things that he had been doing and how much they were hurting me. But before I told him that, I had reminded him of our third year anniversary, and I had to take a trip to Dubai to check on the restaurant in two days, which took him by surprise. We talked a lot and ironed things out. I had hoped that he would change, you know. I thought he would see his mistakes and rectify them, but instead the man of the house decided to overdo everything that he was doing. Our conversation that we had looked like it had never happened, and everything I had said went from one ear to another ear. I won't lie and say I got used to it because it was sickening and heartbreaking. My conscience would tell me that maybe he was cheating on me, or he had found someone else who was better than me. That was why he was no longer coming home often. Tony was taking the fact that I loved him for granted. He took my love for a ride, and as a good wife that I was, I would understand his behavior. I have understood and tried to come to terms with it and made peace, but it was really hard. It was hard to the point that I would sometimes cry myself to sleep whenever I would think about what was happening in my marriage. Sometimes I would just go to my grandparents' house to cool my head. The tension and everything was too much for me. My sister had suggested that she would move in with me for some time until things got back to normal between my husband and me. Things didn't go the way we had thought. Instead, he came back home regularly, but he would always complain about being tired when I tried to initiate intimacy. Tony was no longer the man that I had fallen in love with, and it was breaking my heart because I loved him, but I was getting bored of always tolerating the old man's childish behavior. I am also a human being. I am a woman. I have a high intimate drive, but he wasn't paying any attention to any of that. Even when I tried by wearing some sexy number to bring back the spark in our relationship, but it wasn't there. He wasn't there. He was always tired or complaining about having a lot of work to do. He forgot that I have desires, which is something that I had told him when we were still dating that I have a high sex drive. And I love being intimate with my partner at least three or four times a week. It's a good thing that I had told him, right? He promised me to always deliver, but he never kept his promise. So one sunny Saturday, Tony had left the house to buy meat. He had asked me to prepare something since his friends were coming over to celebrate his other friend's arrival in Italy. I have heard that he was residing in Los Angeles, LA, but now he had relocated to this side. So I prepared everything and Tony's other friends started coming with their partners because everyone was having a good time up until the man of the day arrived. Mind you, that time I still had to prepare for the business trip. Well, more like it was a trip to check on my restaurant business that was abroad and to meet up with the sponsor. You know, I had told my husband about my trip, but surely that day I saw that he had forgotten about it or he was just avoiding it. During that braai, I asked to speak to my husband on the side when we were in a quiet place, which is our matrimonial bedroom. I reminded him about my trip and guess what he said? He just told me that he still remembers, but he doesn't see the need for me to go while we had guests. He even had the nerve to ask me who would take care of the guests if I were to go on the busy day. I couldn't believe my ears, you know. I was so angry at him, but mostly at myself. I somehow regretted even getting into marriage. So I had rescheduled my meetings and my plane to the following day, but the meetings would take place on the day after. My husband didn't even apologize about his behavior and was insensitive when it came to my business. He preferred me to lose a sponsor then to leave his stupid bri and friends. That person who told me that was not my husband, well, it wasn't the husband that I had thought I knew. I didn't even bother addressing the issue because it was going to cause a lot of noise and chaos. So I decided to deal with it when I came back from my trip. So the next day I went to the United Arab Emirate, Dubai, where I would be meeting the sponsor and where I had opened my restaurant. I really love Dubai for my business because besides the fact that it was a tax-free country, but it has so many business opportunities. 
Some look at it as a good country for vacations and tours, while some, including myself, saw it as a country with great business opportunities. It was beautiful for vacations and tours, yes, but people don't see the kind of opportunities that are in Dubai and UAE as a whole. Anyway, when I got there, I checked on my restaurant and I was impressed with the work my employers were doing and it was quite busy when I got there, which was a bonus for me. The following day, I went to meet with the sponsor. Of course, we were meeting in my restaurant as I was going through some paperwork. You know, when someone says, I feel like I'm looking at Jesus himself. Well, that was what I felt. His body structure, cleanly trimmed mustache, his sexy hazel blue eyes. I was taken aback by the guy. He was really handsome. You know, the kind of handsome Leonardo DiCaprio. That was how he looked. His eyes looked naughty though, and I love being naughty. The guy was not what I had actually expected to be my sponsor. The guy was introduced as Bernard Thurston, male 33. His appearance was charming and mind blowing. You know, when you see someone for the first time and automatically feel attracted to them. That was how I felt with Bernard. I was not attracted to him because of his handsomeness only, but I would sometimes imagine myself being intimate with him. I imagined myself and him riding and grinding each other. My imaginations went wild to a point that I would see him exploring my whole body, his pinkish, sexy lips kissing every fiber of my body. I know it was wrong of me to drool and think like that for my restaurant's sponsor, but I couldn't help it. I mean, the guy was everything and more. I just wanted or craved for only one night with him, then it would have been enough for me. I am a witch and a loose cannon, I know. But how was I supposed to stop my mind and desire to think about the poor guy? Mind you, that time he was going to be staying with us for some time up until he gets his own place to stay. So imagine the torture and pressure that I would be feeling. I know it's sinister to have these kinds of thoughts for my sponsor, and I was supposed to keep it professional, but I couldn't help it. Only one night with him was going to solve everything. As much as I love my handsome, smart husband, Bernard was the type of guy that you can only have a crush on and date because he was too extreme. His handsomeness, the way he was speaking, would make any woman drop their panties for him. One week later, I was still in Dubai and I was actually staying with Bernard. Well, most of the time I was with him since he had offered to take me on a tour around the UAE. He is a very cool guy, carefree, talkative, and funny. He easily adjusted to the new environment and it was going well for him. I had seen him doing workouts a few times in the morning. His abs were something else. I felt like I would touch them. I had so many dirty thoughts for the poor guy and I really wanted to stop thinking like that with my sponsor, for goodness sake. During that week, I remember that I was in the small kitchenette in the B&B &B that I was staying in preparing breakfast for both me and him. Yes, we had spent the night together, but going through some paperwork together and talking about business. He then came in wearing only a very tight vest and jogging shorts. He just stayed with me in the kitchen, keeping me company. Only if he knew that his company was a destruction to me. He started asking me about my life in general and how I started the restaurant business, wanting to know how being married was. I told him what he needed to hear and found it enough to share. I couldn't tell him everything about my life and my marriage. Yes, he was my sponsor, but not my friend. So I couldn't tell him everything that is going on between my husband and I. It was going to be over boundaries. No. Mind you, Tony and I had been arguing a lot lately about why I left without notifying him and about him being always absent even when I was away. He never called to check up on me and how the business was going. That led to a very heated and biggest argument. My husband and I were slowly drifting apart. Yes, our connection and love would always be there, but we were drifting apart. I felt like he was trying to push me away because even when he is under stress and pressure, he no longer confides in me as his wife. I would sometimes wonder who he confides to if he was shutting me out the way he was doing. It really hurt me having to beg every day for your partner to give you the attention that you need. The more I was spending time with Bernard, the more we got closer. I ended up confiding in him about Tony's behavior and my marital problems because it was really shutting my heart. And it was just evident that I was going through something because I would sometimes zone out when Bernard was speaking to me. I didn't know who to talk to, so Bernard was the only person who was willing to listen to me vent about my marriage. I know I shouldn't have done that, but what I was supposed to do, because I couldn't keep my sadness and heartbreaking moments inside my chest. I was going to burst and a lot would have been destroyed. So Bernard prepared snacks for us especially marshmallows and hot chocolate, which were my favorite when I was not feeling well or feeling down. I had expanded my time in Dubai. I was still enjoying myself and I didn't want to be around Tony for a little while. I appreciated the time and ear that Bernard had lent me and made me vent in him. I needed to offload. My chest was too heavy. As I was crying like that, Bernard hugged me and promised to always be there for me when I needed a shoulder to cry on. 
since Tony had been so distant and acting the way he was, especially after the argument that we had. He started switching off his phone to a point that he would not be reachable the whole day, maybe until late in the evening. And I knew how much he hated being called late in the evening because he would be in bed sleeping or working. Bernard's hug was actually what I needed. You know the kind of hug that is warm and welcoming? The one that makes you feel like everything is going to be okay. So as we were still hugging, I found myself kissing him. We kissed and things got out of hand. A kiss escalated. We ended up doing the deed in the lounge. Mind you, that time I had no clue that Tony had bugged my phone's camera to track all my movements and to know what I am doing, with who and when. I had completely forgotten that my husband was that insecure, and that was the reason why he didn't want me to fly to Dubai. Since that indescribable day, Bernard and I continued seeing each other. Sometimes we would get intimate all over the B&B, &B, even on the couches, and it was just fire, while some other time we would go to a nearest hotel to book for the day. We couldn't book for the night because my husband was going to be suspicious when I did not answer my phone whenever he called. We did our thing carefully because if Tony was to find out about us, I knew that I was going to suffer the consequences and I would be left a divorced woman. Bernard was giving it to me so sweetly and gently. He was very explosive. He knew how to explore a woman's body and make her feel foreign and end up speaking in tongues. He knew every spot to touch to make me submit to his commands. Well, he loved gentle, rough, intimate moments. I didn't even know that there was actually gentle, rough type of intimate sessions. I learned a lot from Bernard, even some new positions that someone would think are extreme, but they are very enjoyable and nice. I was not a submissive wife to my husband, but with Bernard, I was submissive without even thinking twice. My husband loved missionary intimacy while Bernard loved exploring new positions and I learned a lot. I mean, my own husband was a one or two rounds type of person, then he would get tired and fall asleep. Bernard, on the other hand, was a dragon. He was spitting fire when it comes to intimacy. He would make you go all night and even wake you in the morning. He would always leave my private area burning and tired. The guy knew his thing and up until today I complimented him. He is the best. Yep, yep. My relationship with Bernard went on and on for like one month, well until the day I went back home. He made sure to check up on me and promised to visit me. We were still careful, but Bernard didn't want us to be private. He wanted us to be seen in public as dating people, and that was not what I had wanted. As much as I was enjoying the intimacy and everything that Bernard was offering, but I loved my husband so much. I wouldn't just leave my husband for an intimacy freak like Bernard. He is doing me good and exploring my body the way I had been desiring, but I wouldn't divorce my husband to be with him. He didn't understand that our relationship was an intimate relationship and business and nothing more or less. But the poor guy had caught feelings and that was not what we had agreed on. It was purely and strictly intimacy. Weeks later, I ended my affair with Bernard. I felt like I had destroyed my marriage and went against my wedding vows. I shouldn't have allowed temptations and desires to control me like that. I should have respected myself and my marriage with Tony. Bernard had started to catch feelings and it was not looking good because we would sometimes argue about his obsessive behavior. I don't know why he was suddenly obsessed because we had an agreement of no strings attached, but he decided to attach strings on our thing and the whole thing got crushed. I went back to my marital home. I wished to change the location and buy a new home for Tony and myself, because the house held so many memories. Even the memory of myself being broken and not taken as the loved wife for the first time was in my marital home. I felt like I had disrespected my husband in the worst way possible, and there was no way to undo what I had done. That's how guilty I was feeling. I know I had wanted or craved for Bernard for at least one night, but it shouldn't have escalated like it did. I should have kept everything professional and strictly business, but no. The stupid me just mixed business with pleasure and guess what happened? I was F asterisk he kicked. A few days later, Tony was back at home while he was working at home most of the time. The guilt was eating me up like a deadly disease. I had tried to act normal around my husband, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he knew something was wrong. I couldn't bear looking at him and acting like a happy wife while I knew what I had done. Tony, being as nonchalant as ever, didn't seem to notice anything amiss. The guilt and anxiety of my abomination grew with each passing day. So one day I was just chilling at home, going through some documents and preparing for the month end special menus. Bernard had called and asked for a meeting since he was around the country. Obviously he is or was my sponsor, so I asked him to come over to my house since I was not feeling too well to be seen in public places. Luckily he agreed. I didn't know that the feelings that I had thought I had buried when I ended things with Bernard would somehow be out there, you know. 
The real reason why I'd ended things with Bernard was because I was also catching some feelings for him, and it was becoming dangerous. During that beautiful sunny morning, I had woken up craving for some intimacy and I needed my husband. So I asked Bernard to come over to my house. I mean, I was alone, so I thought, why not invite Bernard over? When Bernard got inside, I couldn't contain myself, so I just told Bernard that we should just get to business. He started by exploring my body so nicely and smooth as usual. Bernard's touch was always like a drug to me, and I was enjoying it so bad. Things got out of hand. Our quick, intimate moment went to be the longest and sweet one. It wasn't my intention to do what I did, especially at my marital home, but I was in my desired moment, and I was too lazy to be out of the house. So that's why I had called Bernard over. I thought it was going to be one quick round to get my satisfaction, but it ended up being the whole service. As we were still busy, and I was about to reach my Cloud9 climax, I heard people speaking. I first didn't pay attention to it because the TV was also playing, so I had thought it was TV only to find out that it was Tony with his friend from work. He looked so spooked and somehow heartbroken or rather traumatized for what he had come across. As much as I was not feeling any guilt when my thing with Bernard kept happening, but when I saw Tony's face I felt ping of guilt and regret. I regretted everything that I had done. It was like I had recently regained my consciousness. At first I had wished to be told that dreaming or what was happening wasn't true. But it was, and from there and then I knew that I had destroyed my marriage. I don't really know why I had invited Bernard over to my marital home with my husband, but desires drove me to that decision and it cost me a lot. I tried hiding my body from Tony's friend, but it was too late. He had already seen everything and there was nothing I could have done except for taking the throw that was on the couch and covering myself. Tony became a statue, so at some moments I think he was trying to digest what he had seen. After some time, I asked Bernard if he should go along with Tony's friend. I was glad when they complied with my request and went out. I was left with Tony, mind you, that time I didn't know what to say nor do. My mind went blank and my tongue got dry. I wanted to tell him that it wasn't what he was thinking, but that would be useless because he had caught me red-handed. On another side, I wanted to apologize and tell him that it will never happen again. But what would I be apologizing for? I didn't know that if I was to apologize to Tony, I would be apologizing at the fact that I got caught, or I would be apologizing at the fact that I had went against my own wedding vows of being loyal and faithful and went outside to destroy that one thing that we had going on, and we had worked so hard to make it where it was. Yes, Tony was the main reason why I had gone outside our marriage to find satisfaction outside, but that didn't mean I should have listened to my desires and jeopardized my marriage right. One month later, things were still not fine between Tony and I, but we continued living together. We didn't even talk about what had taken place. When I tried to apologize or even try to explain to him what had really happened, he would dismiss me and go out to only God knew where. I was regretting ever getting it up with Bernard again because I had closed the Bernard chapter when I started to learn how to focus on my marriage but on my mini vacation the guy just showed up and all the desires that I had came back. All I wanted was for Tony to pay attention to me and take me or treat me as his wife, not his roommate. I needed him next to me. I wanted to feel his touch, his kisses and intimate moments. I wanted him to notice me just like the old time when we started dating and even before we got married. I missed him. I missed the spark that we had before we got married and during our first years of being married. I wanted my best friend back, but he wasn't there and Bernard was there to step in where Tony couldn't provide. During that month, he came back home and told me that he had moved on and I should find a place to stay because his new person was going to move in with him, so one had to go. I asked who was the person he wanted to bring into our marital home and he told me that he would introduce me to her later that day. All I had to do was to cook a nice dinner because she was a special guest. That time I kept thinking about who he would bring into our home and why would he tell me such a thing. My mind was telling that he was doing that to spite me or make me jealous. Sure, I had done him wrong in the worst way possible, but how could he want to introduce his new girlfriend to me while I was still his lawful wife? My heart was torn apart. I found myself going into a very depressing state that I had never thought I would survive. He should have just filed for divorce if he didn't love me anymore instead of hurting me the way he was. I was not sure if I was ready to see his newly found love or a bait to spite me. Later that day, he came back and I got the best shock of my life. He came in with my worst enemy. Imagine my lower grade bully was actually the girl that Tony introduced to me as his new lover. I couldn't believe it, you know. I looked at Patricia with so much hate and rage. I mean, I hadn't forgiven nor forgotten the things that she had done to me while we were in senior primary school. I couldn't believe Tony, you know, and to worsen things. 
He forwarded me all the videos from the very beginning of my affair with Bernard in front of his girl, then told me to check my socials in an hour. Yeah. Tony introduced her and looked like they were genuinely in love with each other. I couldn't believe that my own husband would actually betray me like that with my enemy's worst part. I didn't know what to say. To say my heart was shuttered would be an understatement. How can a person who claimed to love do something so sinister to you? I couldn't fathom seeing them all touchy-feely in front of me, so I had left them alone in the dining room. Tony came into our bedroom and asked if I felt how sweet the revenge was, and that he wasn't done because that was a start. I couldn't believe the psycho that I had married. I thought he was sane, but no, he was insane. So he used my worst enemy to spite and avenge himself just because he had caught in an act with Bernard. Tony was just pure evil and disgusting. After that hour, he had told me to check my socials, and I checked why he wanted me to be on socials in the evening. When I logged in, all my actions with Bernard were posted there. People even created memes with our videos. It was so embarrassing and degrading. I went back to my grandparents' house and to say they were disappointed at what I did and how I had destroyed my marriage would be an understatement. But another thing, they got very angry when they learned that my husband had gone out to take my worst enemy to avenge himself. The very same person who I almost lost my life to because of her. Tony had the nerve to take her and introduce her to me. You know that time I lost a lot, including my investors and sponsors, because even now I'm trying to get other investors, but I'm failing because of those videos. I don't know what to do nor say. Please help me understand what was going on in my marriage. Yes, till today we have not got divorced, but we no longer live together. Another thing I want to do is to save my businesses because slowly they are drowning and going down the drain. What should I do? How do I deal with all of it? I am suffering. I know I am the one who started all this, but I never thought I would find myself in this situation. Please advise me because I am lost in the wild and I need to get out. Hi guys, I'm not sure how to say what this post is about. I recently noticed some changes in my wife, and I'm trying to get to the root of it. I love my wife very much, so I don't want to jump to conclusions and make a big mistake. I'm very nervous and scared. I don't know what to expect. I'm going to be making an update to this post every week as I try to find out what secrets my wife has been keeping from me. I want my fellow Redditors to give me advice on the next step to take after each post. It took me a lot of time to know something was off and now that I know, there's no going back. I need to know the truth. My name is Jason and I'm 35 years old. I've been married to my beautiful wife, Tina, who is 31 years old for two years. Our marriage is a love marriage and I fell in love with her from the very first day I saw her. I know how cheesy and cliche that sounds, but trust me, I mean it. I work at a PR company that takes up my time a lot, so finding a partner was quite difficult for me. I did not have the time to go on dates and flirt with potential partners, so I had to give in to my sister's demands to set me up. Tina was the second girl my sister introduced to me, and she drew my interest almost immediately. My wife is beautiful, confident, and very intelligent. And those are qualities I was drawn to when I met her four years ago. I did not have time to properly date her at first, so we just talked over the phone and texted for the first few weeks. But after some time, I knew I felt something strong for her, and that's how we started dating. We dated for one year before I proposed, and then we got married some months later. My marriage with my wife has been beautiful, and I really hope it still is. I don't know if my fellow Redditors will ever understand how much this breaks my heart to even write this. It's a mix of anxiety, fear, and hope, because I never thought the day would come when I would write about my marriage on Reddit and seek advice. My wife is everything I ever dreamed of, and I have blessed the day we got introduced every minute. It's been two years, guys. My wife and I have been married for the past two years. We have explored our marriage and adjusted to life in the best way we could. Consequently, months after we got married, my wife told me she lost her job. I never really knew where she worked. All I knew was that she was a fashion designer. She told me she needed a job, so I tried to find one close to our house in New York. But she insisted on the one that was almost a two-hour drive from our house because she preferred the working environment. We considered the tedious journey, so I rented an apartment for her close to her working place. My wife stays at her apartment from Mondays to Wednesdays, and then she stays at our place for the rest of the week. I didn't really like the arrangement at first because of the distance between us, but I got used to it. I'm also busy myself, so there's not much difference. This has been our arrangement for the past two years, and we've made it work. But I've noticed that this arrangement has not been what I thought it was. I'm still in doubt, even as I write this. 
I've never hoped to be wrong in my entire life, but now I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this post is a mistake and I'll end up coming to tell you guys how wrong I'd been. I know you all are wondering, what are the changes you noticed in your wife? Let me put it this way. I don't think there has been any changes. The only difference is that I have more time in my hands now and I'm noticing that some things are really fishy. I got promoted last week at work, so that means I have reduced my workload. I even have days off the week now that I can spend however I want. Because of this change, I've been home a lot. I have noticed that my wife doesn't really keep to our usual schedule. I caught my wife breaking our arrangement. Yes, Redditors, you read that right. My wife had not followed the schedule we made. She does not stay at our house for the four days we agreed on. I wanted to surprise her with my promotion by coming home earlier than usual last week. It was a Thursday, and I wanted to see the shock on her face when she found me home earlier than expected. I parked my car outside the gate that day because I did not want her to hear me driving in. I tiptoed into the house and slowly walked into our room. To my surprise, my wife was not at home. I did not find her even after searching the whole house. I was very surprised because she was supposed to be at home on Thursdays. I got worried and decided to call her that day. Where are you? I asked her after we exchanged greetings. I remember how relaxed my wife had been as she answered over the phone. I'm at home, of course. Why are you asking? After ending the call, I assumed I did not search the house enough, so I searched it a second time, but my wife was still nowhere to be found. Dear Redditors, I was really disturbed that day. I felt very confused and doubtful. Why did my wife lie to me about her whereabouts? I kept asking myself that question because honestly, I found it fishy. I waited for her to come back home for hours, but she didn't. I even had a shower and got dressed, yet I did not see my wife. I assumed she was at work, but I couldn't understand why she preferred to hide that fact from me. She got back at 7.30 p.m. that night, which is almost an hour before I usually get back from work. Where have you been? I asked her immediately as she entered the bedroom. My wife looked very surprised to see me. She could not answer at first, but after some seconds, she smiled as she answered, You got home quite early today. I just went out to get some ice cream. I was surprised because she made it seem like she had been home all day and she wasn't home all day. I've been here since 1 p.m. I did not see you home. When I called, you said you were home. I said to her because, dear Redditors, I needed to know where she had been. I saw no reason why she had to lie if she just went out to get ice cream. I'm sorry, I got stuck in traffic and I did not want to let you know so you would not get worried, my wife told me. I did not buy her excuse because I knew there was no traffic that day. There was a bakery some blocks away from our house. She did not need to drive miles away to get an ice cream. Though I was suspicious, I did not want to make a fuss about it. The whole incident made me forget all about my promotion and I did not tell her about it that day. That's the first change I noticed, guys. My wife lied to me twice that day. The next day was a Friday and I expected my wife to be home. She got dressed and told me she wanted to go get groceries, then she left the house. I made myself breakfast and waited for my wife to get back so I could take her out on a date. Guess what, guys? My wife did not get back home for hours. I waited from 7 a.m. when she left till 2 p.m. I got worried and called her phone to ask where she was. She told me she was at home. Yes, guys. My wife lied again. I found it very annoying at that point. I even thought she was trying to prank me on the phone. My wife proceeded to ask me how my work was going. That's when it hit me, guys. My wife did not know I was at home. She thought I went to work because I did not tell her about the promotion yet. I forgot to tell her the day before, so she had no clue about it. So when she left for the grocery store in the morning, she assumed I'd be at work before she got back, in which case, she did not come back. I am not joking, guys. I'm serious. My wife lied for the third time. When I got off the phone that day, that's when all the questions started popping up. I asked myself if this was how she'd been lying to me all this while. I didn't know why she lied or what was going on, but I knew it was not right. If she made up stories to leave the house in my absence, then something was very fishy. I practically paced around the house that day. Yes, I was so confused. I had to piece the puzzles together. My dear Redditors, 
I went crazy that day trying to understand what was happening. I started racking my brain to remember how many times she left the house before me and if she did the same thing all these while. I hate lies and the fact that my wife was lying to me made me very upset, but I did not want to confront her without getting my facts straight first. At approximately 5.30 p.m. that day, I decided to call her again and ask her to make me my favorite pasta dish if she was home. Tina insisted she was home and told me she could make the pasta for me. Guys, you can imagine the shock I felt. I was standing right in our kitchen and I could hear my wife shuffling through spoons and pans over the phone and she was telling me she was already putting the pots together so she could make the pasta immediately. That's when I knew there was fire on the mountain. She went as far as pretending to be in our kitchen, shuffling through the pantry, looking for all the ingredients for the pasta. Unknown to her that I was in the kitchen at that very moment. At that moment, I realized two things, guys. My wife lied to me, and she was not at home, and wherever my wife was, it was definitely not her working place. She was at her apartment. That's the conclusion I came to. I don't understand why my wife would lie about being at home. It also did not make sense that she would be at her apartment when she was not supposed to be working on Fridays. It did not also make sense that even though she was working, she was at her apartment instead of being at the fashion store. In order to be absolutely sure my suspicion for my wife was not unnecessary, I decided to leave the house before she got back from wherever she went that day. I left the house to go see a friend in the evening at 7 p.m. and catch up with him. I got home at 8.30 p.m. that day and my wife was already home. She asked why I was late and I told her I had a lot of things to do at work. She told me she was worried because my pasta had gotten cold. Yes, guys, you read that right. My wife lied to have made pasta for me. I was shocked and couldn't understand how that was possible when she was not at home. I did not question her, though. I ate the pasta after she microwaved it for me. After my wife went to bed, I had to go check the kitchen to see what was going on. I did not think it was possible for her to make the pasta within an hour after I left, and then it got cold. Dear Redditors, I got the shock of my life. Again. In the waste bin, I found a plastic takeout bag from a restaurant. That meant my wife got me takeouts on her way back and pretended to have made the pasta so I wouldn't suspect anything. To be honest, guys, I was disappointed in her that night. I was very disappointed because I never imagined her lying to me for any reason. I spent the past three days thinking about what happened that night, guys. I caught my wife lying to me for two consecutive days. It was very suspicious and disappointing. I don't want to jump to conclusions and that's why I'm taking Reddit on this journey with me. I want you all to advise me after each update so I don't end up taking the wrong steps. I can't help but wonder if she has always lied to me but I was too busy to even notice it. Please let me know what to do guys. Update. I can't believe it's already been a week since I posted this. Time flew by so quickly guys. I did not expect so many of you to help me out and tell me what to do. When I made the post. I only actually expected 15 comments at most. I did not think anyone was interested in my state of confusion. But I have a lot of comments. I can't reply to each one, but I'll try my best. Let's get to the business of the day. Let me tell you all how things have been for the past one week. So I listened to all of you and decided not to jump to conclusions until I knew exactly what was going on. Most of you said no one likes to be wrongly accused without facts. I love my wife too much to do that to her, so I patiently waited to get my facts straight. I won't lie, guys. To be honest, the past week has been crazier than I thought it would be. I was so nervous after this post because I did not know what to expect. It was an influx of emotions. My wife and I spent Saturday and Sunday going on dates and having a nice time. She did not sneak out during the weekend because she knew I'd be home throughout. At some point, I even forgot about the post I made because my wife and I were back to enjoying our marriage. In other words, life was back to the way I knew it. The real trouble appeared all over again after the weekend was over. It was Monday, and my wife had to go to her workplace and spend three days there. I normally left for work before her on Monday because of how hefty my workload had been. I had less workload, so I did not go early. I told her I wanted to rest a little before going I listened to you all and did not tell her about my promotion yet. After my wife left for work, I went to the kitchen to grab some coffee. That's when I noticed something was off. 
Guys, my kitchen was practically empty. I used to be so busy that I ate takeout and hardly came to the kitchen. Consequently, anytime I came to the kitchen, I did not notice anything unusual. That day was different because I sent my wife grocery shopping during the weekend. I gave her my credit card like I usually did and asked her to get groceries. So when I checked the kitchen and it was empty, I was very confused. I even checked the cupboards, refrigerator and pantry, but the only things there were chips and juice. I checked to see if I was debited during the weekend. I normally just gave my wife my card to get whatever she wanted for herself or the house. I never checked, but that day, I had to. I was debited for $150 that day. I did not understand how just the two of us could have finished $150 worth of groceries in two days. That was another sign that I might have been missing a lot of details about what was going on in my house. I was so busy working that little things like that skipped my mind often. I went to work feeling very angry that day because I did not like the new mishaps I was noticing. It felt more frustrating because I could not even confront my wife immediately and ask her what was going on. I had to be patient, but trust me, the patience was practically slipping off my fingers that day. My dear Redditors, my mind was not at rest that day at all. Even my colleagues noticed my change in mood and asked what the problem was. I brushed it off and told them I was just feeling unwell. I was moody because the beautiful marriage and near-perfect wife I had seemed to be having problems. It was a problem that needed urgent repair because there was no way I was going to let my wife blindside me like that. So I had to think of a plan very fast and I did so at work. I got home that day with the intention of getting to the bottom of the mystery. I took a one-week leave from work. My boss was surprised because it is very unlike me, but he granted the leave to me. I planned to use that period to find out exactly what had been going on behind my back. So guys, the next day was a Tuesday, which meant that I had to send money to my wife. Ever since we got married, I usually sent her money for upkeep every Tuesday, since she lived in another apartment and needed to fund her feeding and needs. I never asked her questions about what she did with her money because honestly, it was not my business. I did not have a problem with providing for both of us. I sent her money as usual, and after some minutes, she called me to thank me. We talked on the phone for hours before we ended the call to get some sleep. I could not sleep that night because I had a lot going through my mind. I wanted to go see my wife the next day at her place of work. I've only been there once, and that was the first day I dropped her off there. The next day, I got ready and drove two hours to get to my wife's place of work. My dear Redditors, I was not ready for what I met there. I did not see my wife at the store when I got there. I asked the receptionist if she was aware of my wife's location and the receptionist asked me what my wife's name was. I was surprised. I was very surprised because I assumed that the receptionist already knew who I was when I told her my name. My wife always told me how she bragged about me to her colleagues. Tina would tell me that her colleagues were very familiar with my pictures because she showed me off all the time. I felt very stupid at that moment because I realized that I did not really know a lot about my wife. I told the receptionist my wife's name, but the receptionist insisted that there was no one with that name working there. Yes, you read that right. Imagine the level of shock and embarrassment I felt after casually strolling into that fashion store and demanding to see my wife only to be told that she did not work there. I had to apologize for wasting her time before I exited the fashion store. Once I got into my car, I practically felt like screaming out loud. I had to think back to the first day I dropped Tina off at the fashion store. I wanted to walk her in, but she insisted I get to work before I get late. I listened to her because it was a two hour drive from the house and a three hour drive to my workplace. When my wife got fired from her previous job, my sister had found another job close to our house, but she rejected that job and said there was another job she liked and her friend owned it. I did not question her because I believe she had the right to make her own choices. I questioned everything in the car that day because I realized that Tina lied about her job. I did not go to the wrong fashion store. I remember dropping her there and it was also the same name. I began to question a lot of things because what I found out was very suspicious. If my wife was not working at the fashion store, where would she have been going for the past two years? I had to ask myself that because I honestly believed I'd been living a lie. The next stop was my wife's apartment. I wanted to go see her there since she was not at work. I refused to call her and ask where she was because I already did that many times before. 
I refused to raise the alarm or give her a hint that I suspected her activities. I wanted to find out the exact truth without any traces of lies. When I got to the apartment, I stayed in my car for minutes, contemplating if I was making the right decision. To be honest, that day I wanted to grab my phone and ask for advice on Reddit before doing anything else. I wanted to speak to you all first, but I was too curious to even think properly. I got out of the car and proceeded to knock on the door. I waited for minutes, but I got no answer. I almost gave up and turned around, but then a little girl opened the door and asked me who I was. I was shocked and spooked to see a little girl of approximately five years old standing at the door of what was meant to be my wife's apartment. Trust me, nothing in this world prepared me for what happened after that. Just when I was about to say hello to the little girl, a man, yes, a man of approximately 30 years old, walked towards the door and stood behind the girl. I almost lost my footing because I did not expect to see a man or a girl there. The man had hard eyes and a very sharp stare. He watched me like a hawk watched its prey, and his eyebrows were raised in alarm. He asked me what I was doing in front of his apartment, and I told him I was looking for a woman named Tina. He glanced at me from head to toe before saying there was no one like that living there. I left the apartment after having to apologize for intruding. Yes, my dear Redditors, my wife also lied about the apartment. She did not live there. At first, I actually thought I was going crazy. I thought I went to the wrong address, but I did not. My wife lied to me. She blindsided me and deceived me. I began to question who I was married to because at that moment, I knew absolutely nothing about that woman. I went home feeling like the fool I currently know I am. That was two days ago. I have not even been able to look at my wife the same way. I cannot even look into her eyes and speak to her because I feel like everything has been a lie. I still don't know what she has been up to or who she has been with. I don't even know who she is right now. I wanted to confront her that very day, but I decided to let my fellow Redditors know first. I want you all to tell me what my next step should be, because I'm at the verge of losing my shit and going crazy. I hate lies, and I hate liars. The fact that a woman I love and hold so highly has lied to my face countless times makes me disgusted with not just her, but myself. Update 2 Hey everyone, I want to say a big thank you to all of you that took your time to comment and share your thoughts and opinions with me. You all have been the reason this quest for me to find out the truth has not consumed me. I appreciate all the kind words of affirmation, encouragement, and advice. I never imagined that I'll get so much love and care from people I've never even met before. Unfortunately, this will be our last update because I have finally found the answers to all the questions that consumed me for the past few weeks. I'm sorry this post is coming in almost after four weeks of keeping you all waiting. I had to take time off to understand why this evil predicament happened to me. Even as I write this, I'm struggling to breathe because the weight of the lies that were told to my face still haunt me till this day. I will no longer refer to Tina as my wife in this update because I no longer consider her my wife. After the previous post, I listened to what most of you advised, which was for me to confront Tina about the fashion store and apartment incident. It was a Sunday morning, and I called Tina to the living room. I told her everything that happened the day I went looking for her in the store and the apartment. Tina was so shocked, she could not even look me in the eyes. I was so desperate to be wrong that I held her hands and told her to tell me the truth and that it was going to be fine. At that moment, if Tina had told me the actual truth, I would have forgiven her. That's how much I loved that woman. I would have forgotten all about her lies and given her a second chance. Well, she did not tell me the truth. Like all scheming bitches and heartless liars, she looked me in the eye and told me I was misconstruing everything. I asked her to explain what she meant and she told me that the people at the apartment were her uncle and niece. I questioned why they did not recognize me or her name. And she told me that her uncle had amnesia and he forgot things often. She even went as far as saying he was still undergoing treatment for his amnesia. I asked her why her niece didn't know her name and she told me that her niece only knew her as Nona and that's what she usually called her. I asked her about the fashion store and she told me the receptionist I'd seen was a new worker. She was so confident and self-assured that I was almost tempted to believe everything she said, but I did not let myself fall straight into her trap. I pretended to believe her and apologize for misunderstanding her. I did not let myself get blindsided again and take her words seriously. 
I did that once and saw where it got me. The next day I called my sister and told her to meet me at a restaurant. My sister was the one who introduced us, so I needed to ask her how she knew Tina. My sister told me she did not know Tina personally. She said she had spoken to her friends to search for a match for me, and one of them introduced her to Tina. I told my sister everything that had been going on and she was just as shocked as I was. She promised to do a background check on her. My dear Redditors, everything is about to get real messy now. I went home and searched through our wedding photos. I recalled that I'd only met Tina's parents thrice. They were nice and welcoming and they approved of our marriage. The last time I saw them was a year and a half ago. She did not introduce any other family members to me except her friends, aunt, and cousins who were in the bridal tray. I did not see her uncle in any of those pictures. After my thorough investigation, I was certain that the man I'd seen that day was not her uncle. I was determined to get to the bottom of everything, so I decided to go back to the apartment the next day. When I got to the apartment, I decided to check the neighborhood first. I wanted to ask around and know if any of the neighbors recognized my wife. It was not easy at all because most of the neighbors were very suspicious of me and did not want to reveal any information till they were sure I actually knew her. I had to show them our wedding picture on my phone screensaver before some of them were ready to talk. A man who appeared to be of the same age group with me told me that it was not only Tina that lived in that apartment. He told me that she had been living there with a man and a child for the past year and a half. I almost lost my footing and fell to the ground as a result of the shock I felt that day. I showed him our picture again and asked him to make sure he was not mistaking Tina for someone else. He told me he was 100% sure that we were talking about the same person. Damn. My fellow Redditors, I was livid. I was embarrassed, angry, upset, and immensely disappointed. There was nothing more disgraceful than finding out you have been living a lie for over four years of your life. I felt like I knew who I was married to, but I did not. I decided to go to the apartment and demand answers from the man who lived there. I knocked on the door in a very violent manner. The door got unlocked almost immediately, but it was not the man I expected to see that was there. It was Tina. I saw Tina standing there with a fucking diaper in her hands, and she was holding the girl in her arms. I remember eyeing her up and down just to see her in nothing but a bum short and a crop top. I clenched my fist and punched the door immediately. I had no self-control at that point. I lost it completely and screamed on top of my lungs. She got scared, dropped her baby, and took a step backwards. I got into the apartment and looked around. If you all thought I'd seen the worst before, you're all wrong. The apartment looked like a replica of my house. Some of my vases, cutlery, and even clothes were hanging around like a fucking accessory. I demanded answers from Tina, but her uncle came out from one of the rooms before she could speak. He was wearing my boxer briefs. Yes, guys, you read that right. The fucking fool that she claimed was her uncle was wearing my own boxers. He yelled at me and asked me what I was doing in his apartment again. I felt like laughing in his face. An apartment I fucking paid the rent, water, and electricity bill for? An apartment I fully funded the food bills? An apartment I fucking gave to Tina? I felt stupid, but it was not his fault. I blamed Tina, and I blamed myself for not being more careful of the things that happened around me. The man tried to have a fist fight with me, but I grabbed a nearby vase and lunged for his head. He was able to turn back in time for it to hit his back. He fell to the ground as a result of the pain. Tina fell to her knees and started pleading for my forgiveness. She cried her eyes out and told me she was very sorry. I was so disgusted by the sight of her that I kicked her hands away when she tried to grab my legs. The only reason I did not fucking go crazy was because there had been a child present there. I asked Tina to tell me exactly what was going on. Yes, my dear Redditors, even after all that happened, I still wanted to hear the truth from Tina. She refused to speak and looked away. It was the little girl that finally made me know the truth. The girl ran to the man lying on the floor and screamed, Mommy, Daddy is in pain. It was the most painful experience of my life. Tina had a child with the man she claimed was her uncle. The child had to be at least six years old, which meant Tina had a daughter before we even met. Tina, her daughter, and also the father of her child lived in the apartment I paid for for the past one year. I decided to go check their kitchen, and that's when I got my answer. 
Groceries were packed in the kitchen. The refrigerator was stocked up and the pantry was literally full. Everything was from my own money. That's why my groceries were finished in two days. I did not need to see anything else, so I left the apartment and went back to my house. The drive home that day had to be the most traumatizing drive of my life. I cried. Yes, I cried. I cried because I felt betrayed and used. I cried because I lost my marriage and wife in a single day. Everything had been a lie. My dear Redditors, I was so depressed that I drank myself to sleep. The whole house was empty and I felt lonely. That night was the longest night of my life. The next day, my sister came to visit. She told me that after her research, she found out that Tina had a child and boyfriend before marrying me. I told her I already knew that, but my sister said there was more. Apparently, Tina hired the people that posed for her relatives and family on the wedding day. Even her friends and parents were fake. Yes, I lived a complete lie. My wife lived two lives at once. She pretended to be my wife while she had a boyfriend and child somewhere else. Tina made me get an apartment that was a two-hour drive from my house so I would not have the time to come see her at work or visit her. She made me pay for the apartment she lived in with her boyfriend and her daughter. She took the money I gave her every Tuesday of the week to fund their lifestyle. She stole my groceries from my kitchen and stocked them up in their house. She stole from my house and closet and took them to her boyfriend. I practically provided for her and her little family. I was the trust fund she had bagged. I learned my lesson the hard way. I fell in love with the wrong person. I trusted her blindly and took everything she said as honest words. I never doubted her decisions, and I never questioned her job. I never even noticed how she was stealing from me in broad daylight because I never imagined that I was married to someone's girlfriend. My dear Redditors, my life has taken a very unexpected turn, and it's taking me time to process it. I'm getting the divorce papers ready, but I do not have a 100% guarantee that Tina will not take part of my property. That's why I'm looking for a very strong lawyer in case we take the case to court. My sister has been my rock in this very tough time. I'm also thankful to my boss and colleagues who have tried to put a smile on my face. When I started writing this post, I never imagined that the truth I went in search for was going to shake my whole life unexpectedly. I do not regret this journey though, because it saved me from living with a woman that was living two different lives. This is the last update, but I'll be ready to reply to comments. I still need time to process this experience, but I'll be back stronger.